Yeah, this lady came to me. She had a stroke and her brain was oh, dead. Oh, God, she fuck was you in this spot in so the much. Grave and then, I want some stories of biohealing going wrong. That's when you'd fucking convince me, right? If she if she had been like, so I placed my hands on either side of her head and it just exploded. It exploded because I was, you know, I was I was thinking about Dynasty and how I didn't really like how the plot's been sort of focused on the younger couples lately. And yep, she just she just vaporized into a blue mist. So yeah, you gotta watch it with this shit. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because real jobs are even worse. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Well, I'm glad you asked, Noah, because I find myself fatigued. I would really? say chronically. Oh, Any chances <laughs> today might have some answers in store. <laughs> Yeah, that and your chronic Lyme disease. But, uh, you yeah, know, I can't help you there, but perhaps our guest masochist can. He is the project director for the Good Thinking Society. He's the president of the Merseyside Skeptics. He's the host to Be Reasonable. He's the co-host of Skeptics with a K. He's the editor of The Skeptic, and he's somehow still the Skeptic of the Year. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> he's Michael Marshall. Marsh, welcome back to the show, sir. I gave that award up fair and square. That's in <laughs> Brazil now. That is oh, out that's there right. in the no, you're right. Pastor you're right. This, on the online thing that... So, so many fewer people attended. You did. <laughs> to Miguel <laughs> Marshall. <laughs> it's just Marsh in a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell us, Marsh, what will we be breaking down today? Oh, God. We watched The Healing Fields. Ooh. It's the documentary about how epigenetics, quantum physics, and Albert Einstein all agree that you can cure cancer by imagining really hard and walking really, really funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, epigenetics agrees. <laughs> and Eli, <laughs> how bad was this movie? Well, if you love timeshare pitches, but you've never been surprised by one halfway <laughs> through an algebra lesson, you <laughs> will love this movie, I think more boring documentaries should do this, right? Like halfway through whatever public safety film they show you at work, they should just be like Coca-Cola. Ah, refreshing. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, God. Nothing like another rambling documentary of talking heads throwing shit against the wall to try to talk about. <laughs> All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh, yeah. I've got to be right out first there and say best worst getting value for money from a single 3D animation. Heck yeah, they All did. All the way through <laughs> this movie, there is one animation <laughs> of a bald 3D man slowly spinning, mostly to his left, occasionally to his right, and they use it every <laughs> other scene of this film. They colour it different ways, they put a different filter over it, but it's the same model. He's got different, like, lights emanating out of his chakras and shit, <laughs> but yeah, like, they're trying to disguise the... It's like they keep putting the same character in a different suit through the movie or something yeah <laughs> yeah it, it felt a little bit like they were justifying the bullshit based on what different color they could apply to this model is that right if you colored him red what could we say that is is that yeah. like a chakra <laughs> thing right we'll find a chakra expert we've got a red one now <laughs> roy g biff guys we have to have seven different powers <laughs> All right, so I was going to go with best worst fat white guy in a tang suit. So <laughs> Ooh. if you're not familiar with the term the tang suit, that's that it's like the traditional old school Chinese suit with the like knot buttons and shit and the straight collar. Anyway, there are a couple of different white guys, fucking cultural appropriators out there who are dressed in this. But one guy is wearing one that obviously he got when he was 24 and it fit <laughs> fine just then, you know? So why the hell would he buy a new one? This one is still perfectly good. I'm going to go ahead and make a bold claim. If you're a white guy wearing a tang suit, I'm going to guarantee you did something wrong. There's, <laughs> I cannot think of a good reason for a white guy to wear a tank suit. <laughs> well, like the only person that springs to mind who'd wear one is Steven Seagal. And isn't he currently like exiled in Russia for various yeah, yeah, different exactly. reasons? <laughs> Although I, I want to be the first to say, 
Marsh would rock a fucking tang suit, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Drunk post QED, just running around in a tang suit. I'll go and fight all of you. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll just need. To, I'll just do something wrong and get myself a suit, and we'll just fit right into this analogy. Yeah, right, fine. right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to go with best worst confluence of bullshit. Listen, podcast listener. We've watched a lot of pseudoscience and we've read and reported on even more over at our sister show, The Scathing Atheist. What we haven't done is visited the contradictory bullshit buffet right. that is this film. <laughs> I, they, there's so little reason for the also because it's, it's, it's like, yes, you can cure all disease by sitting there and imagining stuff. And you can also do it using like, why would I need an also? Yes. Yeah. Right. Why would I want to add to that? But there's the guy who does the magic walk to cure everything, and that's just one of the different magic walks you can do to cure everything. Well, don't learn a second one then. Right. You've nailed it with the first. So, I certainly don't need to bring tuning forks into this shit. So, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, we're we're gonna need a minute to warm up our electric monks. So we're gonna pause for a quick break. But when we return, we'll dive into the somehow not quite criminal advice that is. The Healing Field. Hey, podcast listener. I'm No Illusions. And I'm Eli Bosnick. Do you love this podcast but wish there was more of it? Well, good news. There is 54 episodes more. That's right. And you can listen to them all by giving us as little as a dollar over at patreon.com slash godawful. We've done reviews of movies like Batman vs. Superman, Pixels, and The Core. All on a Patreon-exclusive RSS feed that you can use with any podcast player. Plus, you'll be helping make this show possible. And there's never been a better time to sign up to support, because this month's upcoming bonus episode is none other than Wonder Woman 1984. It's got magic rocks, it's got tinfoil armor, and it's got me doing a Gal Gadot impression. It's, it's your Melania voice, isn't it? You bet your ass it is, no illusions. You bet your ass. And if you want access to that the second it comes out, why not head over to patreon.com slash godawful and toss us what you can. You'll get that one, 54 movies we've already done, and a new one every month. That's right. Patreon. Extra stuff for you, not starving to death for us. All right, everyone. Welcome to the first production meeting for The Healing Field. Ray, Namaste. Greg, you can't just say namaste. I can too. I can. Okay. 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 Everyone. So the, the goal with this film is to give an overview of the different sorts of energy healing and their benefits. Well, and imagery healing. Right. And imagery healing. And sound healing. Yes. Oh, and, yep. And sound healing. And, and don't forget Qigong, obviously. Right. Right. Which kind of brings me to my first point, which is... um. What do all of these things that we're talking about have in common? Oh, uh, mm. they heal people. No, that's right. They do. I mean, but, but, but not in the same way. And I, not even according to the same worldview, it, it would be like making a documentary called medicine that went over brain surgery, chemotherapy and exercise. Yeah, no, I guess that's right. Um, Oh, what about their uh, ancient Chinese origins? No, that's only two of them. I mean, mm. you know, Phil just made up his imagery thing on a trip to Israel. So. It's true, I did. Oh, yeah, damn it. Mm. Come on, guys. There's got to be something that ties all of this together, something that we can center the movie around. What does all of our stuff have in common? Um, It's homicidally dangerous bullshit. There it is. That's the movie. That's it. Well done, Greg. Well done. Namaste. Okay. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. I'm going to start off on Bad Electronica, just in case you didn't already hate it. <laughs> there was an ad for this on Amazon Prime for a dog thing that I wished I was watching instead. So bad. <laughs> so bad. Why did I hit skip ad? God damn it. That's the most fun I was going to have. Yeah. So we start off on this nonsense. It's like, we live in a time of accelerating breakthroughs in science, check, medicine, check, and consciousness. <laughs> yeah. Come again. And it's great because it goes with consciousness, they show a lot of chakras on the screen. I thought, has, has there been a lot of breakthroughs in chakras lately? Yeah. <laughs> so do you remember there's that massive tunnel under Switzerland that discovered a new chakra? Maybe that's what they're uh, referring to there. So fucking stupid. Yeah. The opening thesis of this movie is that surgery and drugs are being challenged by literal hand-waving. 
<laughs> and, and they make that out like that's progression. Like they cut straight from doctors and surgery to someone getting her tummy rubbed by Reiki. And yes! they use that as an example of progress. We've gone from this barbarism to this futuristic and uh, progressive medicine of tummy rubs. <laughs> Turns out you don't need any of those machines or the walls. All you need is one of these paper screen things and you can get those at Pier One. They're great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, so, of course, this is another one of these talking head documentaries. So we're going to meet a series of woo merchants, the first of which is Bruce Lipton, whose own website describes him as, quote, an internationally recognized leader in bridging science and spirits. <laughs> <laughs> I have padded resumes less ashamedly than Dr. Bruce Lipton has his intro quote. It's, they're, they're talking about he's a very serious doctor with degrees from blah, 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 but he's not wearing shoes. Right. <laughs> no, shop not. Where a man is not wearing, I don't care. Who the doctor is? Dr. Fauci comes out next week for his little speech thing and he's not wearing shoes. I don't buy anything he says. <laughs> it makes me think that the director had a struggle getting him to wear pants as well. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, we, okay, we're not, not going to shoot, shoot you from the waist up. <laughs> They describe him as well as a preeminent scientist in quantum physics, DNA, and stem cell biology. And those aren't closely linked fields no. at all. And if, <laughs> if anybody claims to be an expert in all three of those fields, they are definitely a crank. You can't be an expert really in all three of those. <laughs> oh, and just in case you had any doubts, he goes in, and we all had notes on this, I noticed, that where he goes in and he says something like, um, there are two competing theories on how biology <laughs> works. One of them is based on reality. And I'm like, okay, we're done, right? We're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote in my notes, one is based on the actual things in the universe. Mine is the other <laughs> one. <laughs> it's like, there are two views. Uh, one is that the body is made of chemicals, matter, and genes. The other view is, Literally anything other than that, and yes. therefore crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he also believes that our beliefs completely dictate our biology, and it's not our DNA, it's our beliefs that dictate our biology. Yes. And the thing is, my sister was born with cerebral palsy, so she must have had some fucked up beliefs when she was a fetus. She was thinking all <laughs> sorts of crazy stuff. Ever since the heartbeat was detectable, yeah. That's right. right. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. And there was some... <laughs> he, he's, he defines quantum physics for, for us here. This is the definition that he gives. Everything is energy and energy becomes entangled and you can't separate it. And I'm like, yep, that is a definition of quantum physics that many physicists would wholeheartedly <laughs> I love how he, he, he digs into that a bit further as well. He explains that. He says, you know, energy becomes entangled, meaning everything that's made out of energy becomes entangled. But you've not really <laughs> clarified yourself there. You've just repeated yourself. Come on. <laughs> All right, we'll be back to him several times, but first we have to meet Dr. Beverly Rubick. Her website dubs her a, quote, internationally recognized, they're all internationally recognized, mm -hmm. internationally recognized pioneer in subtle energy research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when I saw her, I thought, oh, that's what Beverly Crusher from Next Generation is up to these days. I'm glad that she's, uh, she's landed on her feet. Oh, there's a lot of Trekkies. They're going to be really pissed about that. But yes, I have her down as Dr. <laughs> Crusher the entire, all through, all through my notes here. Okay, but I, there's it's just a tiny moment when they introduce her. They've got her with a microscope because, you know, mm. look, she's real. But she's pantomiming wrong because she's twiddling the knob too far in either direction. <laughs> so she's just, she's like zooming in. Zooming <laughs> First of all, what are you looking at? Energy? But second of all, she's moving it too fast. There's she's right. not using. Tell yeah. yeah, unless you're trying to zoom in on Ant-Man, there is no reason to ever do that with a microscope. She's like, micro microscope goes up, microscope goes down. Microscope goes up, microscope goes down. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, we're seeing her do that because... Because when we see that kind of thing, it's the only break and respite we get in this film from the relentless barrage of stock footage, which is what the rest of this film is made up of. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I genuinely think few companies have done more detriment and harm to like international global health than iStock.com <laughs> for their affordably priced stock videos that have just make up all of this bullshit. <laughs> On last week's show, we said cameras should be hard to get a hold of. On this week's show, it's stock footage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the key. All right. So, yeah, Beverly, though, is apparently she works for the Institute for Frontier Science. That sounds sinister to me. Like right? Frontier Science sounds a lot less like pushing the boundaries and a lot more like handing out the smallpox blankets. <laughs> that's what Frontier Science sounds like. <laughs> 
So yeah, but no, but she gives medicine her due. It's not that medicine is useless. It's great if you get into a car accident or something visible is wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> right, which might as well be her way of saying, please stop bringing me people who've been in car accidents. You know my <laughs> stuff isn't. Come on. <laughs> But this is such a classic quack gambit. This is where they are now because they can no longer get away with saying all medicine is bad, which is what used to be the alt med thing. So instead they say, well, obviously medicine's good for trauma and broken bones and Mm -hmm. surgery, et cetera. And then in their very next breath, I wrote in my notes, they'll be claiming that medical error is the third leading cause of death. Yep. Guess what she says next? (laughs) It's the same fucking thing. It's exactly that. She says medical error is one of the number one causes of death. So how many... How many number one causes of death are there, Beverly? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then she drops this bomb on us. She tells us that, like, unlike what Western medicine will tell you, people need to take care of their own health. That's what we learned from integrative medicine. Yeah. As a fat guy, let me tell you, Western medicine has never told me to take better care of myself. Right. <laughs> Not <Yeah>. one. <laughs> the United Healthcare people knock on my window every morning and they're like, come on, man, an apple. One apple today. Please. <laughs> like, Eli, random passersby tell you to take better care of your health. It's not just medicine. <laughs> But she, she says about med- modern medicine that it's it's limited in dealing with diabetes. But that limit is can stop you dying of diabetes. So it's not a bad it's not a bad limit. No. And then she says you need to take better care of your health. You know, self responsibility. So she's saying you should take more self responsibility for your having been born with type one diabetes. Like, why right. don't you do something about that? Exactly. Take some fucking self responsibility for your <laughs> insulin regulation. God damn it. <laughs> Shouldn't be eating all that candy in the womb. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And and then they I guess they're out of PhDs now, so they roll out Lynn McTaggart. <laughs> an anti vaxxer who Mc wrote a fucking Taggart. Yeah. This fucking woman wrote a book that blamed deaths on a vaccine that didn't even exist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I know Lynn McTaggart's work fairly well. So Lynn McTaggart, amongst having written that book and various other things, she ran a a magazine here in the UK called uh, What Doctors Don't Tell You. And it was filled with all the stuff that no doctor would tell you. And there's a very good reason that a doctor wouldn't tell you the stuff that was in <laughs> What Doctors Don't Tell You. And it was it was genuinely one of the worst things. It was a glossy magazine. It used to be available on the shelves of supermarkets. It's no longer available on the, on the shelves of supermarkets because she's not allowed to sell that magazine on the shelves. She she took a voluntary decision to stop selling that magazine to people who haven't directly subscribed via her website. It was a voluntary decision to stop putting it where people might buy it. <laughs> but this magazine, we've good thinking, the charity they work for, we spent a long time raising concerns about this magazine and doing pieces in various newspapers pointing out how literally how dangerous this magazine was. This magazine would publish pieces saying that you can cure your own cancer, don't trust chemotherapy. Like really dangerous shit. Wow. I know people who died because they were subscribers to this magazine and this rabbit holed them into the whole worldview. But the weird thing about this is despite us having spent ages pointing out all the things that's wrong with what doctors don't tell you, I've not ever been mentioned in that magazine, right? And the reason that's weird is in one issue of that magazine, in one single issue, they covered three of the projects that I was leading complaining about them and then attributed them to other people. It's like, I can't believe the BBC did this whole hit piece on the, on this particular therapist. And what about the Telegraph sending an undercover journalist over there? And what about Sense About Science doing this? And I read it and think, that, that's my work. <laughs> Give me the debit that I deserve. Why are you giving this debit, this, this credit to other people? And the weirdest thing about that is, like, I work for a very small charity. We had uh, Simon as the, as the chair. He's been the subject of various hit pieces in that magazine where they've alleged he was being funded by Diet Coke and various other things. Uh, I work with Laura, and she's been the, the subject of hit pieces in that magazine. As has Laura's husband, who doesn't do any of this work, who's just worked for a different company, but they figured Laura can't have been doing that by herself because she's just a lady. Right. Um, so it must be her husband who's the power behind the throne. <laughs> so they did an entire hit piece on Laura's husband, who's got nothing to do with the charity, and I've never been mentioned once, and I'm really fucking pissed off about that. That's the most irritating thing <laughs> what Doctors Don't Tell You has ever done. All right, God damn it, Lynn. Get your shit together and trash Marsh. Yeah. And we have some good <laughs> sources for her. Come on, MarshDidCovid.com. All right. <laughs> you guys have given me more shit than she ever has. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so- <laughs> Yeah, so, and then she gives us this ridiculous speech about how the body is holistic because you can apply medicine to the arm that'll affect your leg. Like, for example, like, if I shoot morphine into your arm, suddenly you feel it in your head, right? Like, 
<laughs> what the fuck? Yes, we all agree that the arm is connected to the leg in a roundabout <laughs> way. What are you talking about? Yeah, there's a whole song about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's an ancient Chinese song that goes. <laughs> My favorite quote of hers in this little section is she goes, you don't have to do stuff through your body or anything that you can see. And I wrote in my notes, I mean, you don't have to, Lynn. <laughs> they but... can't make you. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, they've just been decrying Western medicine for being kind of all filled with side effects. They give you all this stuff and there's all these side effects. And then in the next breath, they're talking about how if you do something to your arm, it, it has a, a, an effect on your leg. Is that... That sounds an awful lot like a side effect, Lynn. That does yeah. sound like your, your holistic view sounds like side effects to no, me. No, it's a leg effect. It's totally, totally different thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now we're we're gonna meet Linny Thomas, who is a healing touch instructor. Okay. I have a question. How do you fail? Instruction implies a pass fail situation. <laughs> How do you fail at energy medicine? Right? Like if I went to go take a master level test of right. energy medicine tomorrow, how would they prove I was not an energy medicine master? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so, well, and she starts off by going like, you know, this is uh, energy healing touch instructor and shit. This has been around for a thousand years. I'm like, why would that be a like? No correct thing has been around for a thousand years. Like maybe, <laughs> yeah, it's a metallurgy of some sort. <laughs> but Jesus Christ! She also said the Chinese started documenting it five thousand years ago, and presumably she knows that because what she's an expert in proto Mandarin. <laughs> it's a weird time to put on that. <laughs> That's so much older than the oldest known Chinese writing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's like, it's gentle. It's non-invasive. It doesn't have side effects. I'm like, what? Man, you can market nothing with flair, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know whether Eli's taken like a, a new a New Year's resolution to not make fun of the way people look because I'm amazed he's got nothing on any of these people so far. Because I thought Linny Thomas here is very clearly the aunt who interferes with the wedding plans in your mum's favorite soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> She's absolutely that. <laughs> She definitely had a bit of a wacky neighborish uh, oh. vibe to her. Yeah, she looks like they keep her in the basement of Boscov's and they feed her all the makeup that's left over from the day, <laughs> right for the free makeover. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now we do the awkward bit where we have to introduce the energy healing, super healthy. You can do it all with your mind, dead lady. Yes, <laughs> right. Oh, uh, she um. She fucking died right before this movie came out, which is, is admittedly awkward. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, of heart disease as well, which is one of the things this movie is explicit about being able to cure with the various things this movie does. Yep. Well, you know, shoemaker's children go barefoot, that old <laughs> <laughs> And so her, her thing about medicine is that Western medicine <laughs> is because, sorry that there's no connective tissue there, Descartes, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Descartes was given dead bodies by the Pope. Yes. Yes. What? Question one, does the Pope have dead bodies to give away? Because I want one for reasons. <laughs> Two, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, we know for a fact that the Pope has got dead bodies to get rid of, but we know that when he has those, he buries them in mass graves under Irish workhouses. Well, right. we know this is everything. <laughs> So, yeah, the, the the least surprising part of that is that the Pope had some dead bodies to offload. <laughs> but, but yes, all of Western medicine came from the dead bodies that the Pope gave to Descartes. We really haven't updated it since then. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? Uh, and there's, there's a point in here that she says as well. The problem with medicine these days is just not enough magic. It's all about kind of science mm -hmm. and materialism, but not enough magic. And I just wanted the film to cut to Eli in surgery going, was that your spleen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. And then they're going to explain epigenetics to us. They're going to nail it, <laughs> by the way. They're going to oh. totally nail their explanation. <laughs> and by the way, bold gambit, they introduce their epigenetics by being like, in the future, everyone will agree with us. Right now, yes. they think we're full of shit, though. So, <laughs> you know. That so often happens with true things that are true is that everyone thinks it's full of shit. And I love that Bruce Lipton is their epigenetics expert because if you go to his Wikipedia page, it lists him as, an, as, a, uh, as having an expert view on epigenetics. But his expert view on epigenetics is 
no, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, no, it doesn't it doesn't exist. It's something else. Because he, he talks about how a, a cell, depending on its environment, you can take a cell and it'll develop into different things depending on its environment. Right. And that's because it's not about genes. It's about the environmental factor. It's like, right, but what you're doing that with, Bruce, is a stem cell. Yeah. Show me that <laughs> happening with any other type of cell. And we're talking, Bruce, but you're talking about a stem cell, which is, that's its job, is to, is to look what it's around and mimic it. That's what, yeah, right, right, exactly, exactly. That's what why we call them that, right? You, but but he implies that you can turn your fucking liver cells into bones with diet. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to push your liver near to your ribs and eventually it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got to be in a rib type atmosphere, Yeah. Jesus Christ. And then he uses like, I'm pretty sure something like 366 words to say something along the lines of happy is better for you than terrified. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Jesus Christ. We hear from Lynn McTaggart here as well, explaining cell biology to go with the, the various other things she's not an expert in. <laughs> and she, she, taught, she says, how can we be entirely driven by our genes if one little thing like a vitamin can derail all of your genetic history? And, you know, she's absolutely right, because I had one single vitamin C supplement and it turned me into a five foot tall, blue eyed Mediterranean hemophiliac. Right. No, it can't. That genetic history upside down. (laughs) I don't get it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, no, there's a game I like to play when we're watching these where I just every time they say quantum physics, I just substitute super hippie magic (laughs) in there. (laughs) Yeah, that'll do it. You can you can kind of understand what they're saying a little because that's what so much of this is. Right. Everything is just such convoluted jargonistic bullshit as you go that it's hard to even understand what they just said let alone whether or not it was right let alone how it was wrong right right yeah for example like there's this one point at which uh, in which one of the ladies is going like now this is what the physicists call the field and i'm like no no physical <laughs> uh, physicists don't have a term for the bullshit that you're talking about because they never have to fucking talk about it <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but unless what you're showing is a physicist pointing at a field, like an actual field with a horse in it, <laughs> yeah. what you just said was wrong. Cow goes moo. Well, in England, they call it a pitch. But uh... <laughs> Yeah, she, she says, the biofield is complex and simple and a bunch <laughs> yeah, of other does. fields. And yeah. it's light and it's your brain waves. <laughs> and, and she also says, you know, scientific pioneers call our non-physical energy field the biofield. It's like, yes, but in turn, we call them something other than scientific pioneers. <laughs> Once they've said that, they lose that term. Well, I, I look, if this was not correct, I really don't think that they could claim that Einstein said it. Okay, (laughs) because if there's one thing I can say about Einstein quotes that I'm not familiar with, have no sourcing and point only to alternative medicine blogs when I Google them, it's that they're genuine and taken in context. Absolutely. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. The only place that I could find that Einstein quote that they're talking about was where Bruce Lipton had written it. So it makes me think he just written it himself and then attributed it to Einstein. Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah, exactly. No, look, I'm allowed to put Einstein's picture next to it. They they won't stop you. (laughs) They won't flag that even. And and this is a bit where we you know we're not that far in. We're, we've already seen this one three D model of a naked person spinning slowly like eight <laughs> times. And so they start doing different things to it. This time they talk about the biofield and they take the initial model and then they put a red layer over it and then a yellow a bigger le- yellow layer over that and then a green layer over that. And I thought, okay, so the biofields are like a multicolored Russian doll situation. Gosh, gotcha. yeah. that, that all makes sense. Now. <laughs> so- we also learn here that biofields are infinite and they interact with other biofields. So I just wrote my notes. Hey, guys, I'm sorry for all the time I jerked off and weirded out your guys' energy fields. I didn't realize mine was infinite at the time. Well, yeah, she seems to have a lot of trouble with collective nouns at this point, right? <laughs> because she said, well, but look, if you consider it my field and your field intermingle, it's like, stop fucking my field, lady. But she's like, so that really makes us one thing. And I'm like, that's not how things work. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, we're all part of we, but that doesn't mean that I'm not I. <laughs> And in that bit as well, she says, we cannot put a boundary on someone's biofield and say where it stops. And I was like, yeah, but there's lots of things you can't do about the biofield. Like, <laughs> there's lots of things you can't explain or put boundaries on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, I, I got to tell you guys, at this point in the movie, I was all in on Spinny Guy. He was by far the most interesting character in the movie. He hadn't said anything that made me want to punch him yet. <laughs> <laughs> and the way that they kept dressing him up in different outfits, like this, at this point, he's got... 
His heart is flashing like he's a boss fight or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He had flames behind him at one point yeah. for a biofield. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. he's then then he's on a graph. Yep. Uh, in, a, in a second, <laughs> they have him slowly rotating in the other direction, which is nice. You know, the dude's got range. He's not a, a one-trick pony, which is nice. Yeah, absolutely. The Gary Oldman of 3D graphics <laughs> of a bald guy, if you will. <laughs> You know what? There's actually a bit later on where it's him, but you don't even realize it's him. He's that good. There's like yeah. <laughs> Lynn before. Lynn was actually this 3D guy. He just he just lose himself into a role. So, oh, so we we misquote Einstein some more. Yeah, like the third or fourth time in the oh, first like 15 yeah. minutes of this film. At this point, I was just writing in my notes. I can't afford not to buy a biofield. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, you were surprised at no point they flashed a 1-800 number at the bottom of the screen during oh, this movie. Oh, for certain. Like, later, they do start showing us people's CDs on screen. I thought <laughs> they just need a number for, like, call now. Absolutely. Yeah, no, there is there is all but a model dropping a bunch of allopathic medicine on the counter and yelling, there has to be a better way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's just this amazing line that it could have easily got lost, but she says, I forget who it was who says, but she says, uh, by shifting the biofield, we shift the dynamics of the body toward a movement toward health and wellness. What? Now, just to be clear, that's not shifting the dynamics of the body to health. It's not even shifting it toward health. No. It's shifting it towards something that's heading towards health. <laughs> and bear in mind that when you head towards something that's heading towards a place, <laughs> it's often because you're heading away from that place. It's a real, <laughs> as I was going to St. Ives situation. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, the accidental honesty that comes from their verbosity, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, because Lynn's misunderstandings went way beyond the medical field. It went straight to linguistics. <laughs> she said at one point, we think of ourselves as discrete objects, but we're not. And I'm like, but we are. Though. <laughs> Lynn, I mean, you're a big girl, but the least I could say about you is you do make it to the category of discrete <laughs> object, Lynn. <laughs> Maybe she means d discreet as in like subtle. It's like, no, we're not discreet at all. We're really fucking obvious about what we're doing. We make, we make documentaries about how we're killing people. <laughs> right. Okay, There's nothing right. discreet about it. All right. Yeah, no, I, you're right. I was not giving her the, uh, the most generous interpretation. My bad. <laughs> God, she says, we're going away from pharmaceuticals and towards energy. And I'm like, okay, dibs on your pharmaceuticals. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. So and then we go back to Candace Pert. We see her long enough to realize that the forward for her book was written by Deepak Chopra. So that's what you need to know about that lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so strange that they describe the leading expert as the late Candace Pert. <laughs> like, if the leading expert in your field is dead, it may not be a mainstream field. There's not many fields that the current leading expert is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she says here, when you have a profound emotional trigger, your whole body changes. And I'm just like, guys, Noah's body changes like three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking anamorph. <laughs> so, then Bruce got in to tell us that um, psychologists say that 70% of our thoughts are redundant. And negative. Yeah, and it's way higher. It's way <laughs> higher than, for that yeah. for Bruce. <laughs> I, and to be fair, he's got me there. Seventy percent of my thoughts are negative and redundant. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I I, I I had the same thought as Mars. I wrote in my notes. You know what? In, in your case, Bruce, I'll take the over. I'll take the <laughs> over. <laughs> and, and just in case anyone was worried, the three D dude is back, but he decided he didn't like spinning the other way. He's gone back to his original direction. You know, you stick to what you know. You don't yeah. need to change things up too much. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. I was I was hoping him to that he do. Y axis at some point. You never did. It's just <laughs> it's always X axis shoe rotations. But you know, but I, I, I think he's got it a minute. You gotta say something for the sequel. So. <laughs> also, very important question. Towards the end here, does Bruce tell us that kids aren't <laughs> conscious until they're six? <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, he does say that. What yeah. is Bruce trying to forgive himself for when he says that, guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything under six basically doesn't count. That's a gimme. That's a freebie. We don't have oh, to worry about that. Jesus Christ. Okay. So now that we've brushed off traditional medicine, we're going to take a swipe at traditional psychiatry, right? And this is a bullshit that I hadn't heard before. Talk therapy is bad because, you know, you dwell on the negative in talk therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's so negative. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just picturing sitting down to a session with one of these people. I was like, and that's when Uncle Timmy took me into the, whoa, 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 whoa. 
How's the weather been lately? Yeah, right. <laughs> right? It's been nice. It's been, been, let's talk about something a little bit lighter, huh? Ew, so, I'm kind of wrecking this. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> That's my new character is the therapist who just responds to everything with awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Also, when they're talking about talk therapy being all uh, all bad and negative, it's illustrated by like a walkthrough of an abandoned and flooded building, which right. just makes me think like, lady, what happened to you in there? <laughs> like, Jesus, you shouldn't be in this documentary. You should be in talk therapy. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. Okay. So then we hear from Dr. Cass and she's so preeminent. She's at the top of the pyramid scheme. <laughs> we, <laughs> we see her uh, supplements and shit. <laughs> Yeah, her supplements that are called Calm and Focus and Energy Balance. So you know she's legit. You don't just get to say that your supplement causes energy balance without some pretty robust <laughs> evidence behind that. Yeah, well, if she's taking the Focus supplement, you know she's legit anyway. Yeah, she's in the Orthomolecular Hall of Fame, a distinction <laughs> so goddamn meaningless, I refuse to capitalize any of it. <laughs> <laughs> they, also say, they also say she's author of more than 10 popular books. <laughs> Just give me the number. <laughs> and we see the covers of these books and, and they they could not look more comically quacky. Yes. They look like something we'd mock up for a gag to take the piss out of alt med books. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. And she explains that after many years of medical practice, she decided not to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's like, yeah, many years of medical practice has taught me medicine does not want me. That is what yeah, I've learned right. from it. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. But so it's it's funny. It's easy to make fun of and everything. But I, I, I want to emphasize that what they're doing here, what virtually every one of these talking heads is doing is saying that what the terminally ill people are missing is sufficient blame for their condition. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. You caused your own cancer because you were too negative. That's 100 percent of this. Yes, exactly. They, they even say that, that, like, you know, we find that like, well, well cancer comes from being angry at people or whatever. I am not one giant walking tumor, so no, the fuck I was going to say, <laughs> the hypothesis to proven by the fact that Noah doesn't have to fight chemo at the end of the movie at the top of a mountain. <laughs> they also have the weird thing where they're like, yeah, it takes so much energy to repress memories. Can confirm. But if you ride a bicycle, you won't remember your dad got eaten by a wolf in front of you. I'm like, what? The, what? Well, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I okay. And then all the people who are thinking to themselves like, well, I couldn't take this any less seriously. Find that they were wrong mm -hmm. because this is when we watch this shit happen. We watch the energy healing. The ladies like arranging imaginary flowers in some other lady's head vase or whatever. Oh, oh. I had her uh, miming giving that lady a Mohican. She was like, it's got to be spiky. It's got to be spiky up to the middle. <laughs> so fucking weird and then they pan over to another lady doing it like it's a comedy reveal <laughs> <laughs> and like i had this moment of empathy with this right because real medicine is so hard you got to take pills you got to exercise they got to do because it's real right it's so much nicer to just be like oh yeah i'll cure your cancer this just sit in this chair and this lady with 90s porn hair is gonna wave her hands around <laughs> your head <laughs> And wiggle your shoulder. Oh, mm. shoulder wiggle seems so much nicer than diet and exercise. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, oh, there's oh. a lovely bit as well, because not only was it shoulder wiggles, at one point they lay someone down on a bed and just went, jelly wobble, jelly wobble, jelly wobble. Yeah, just like wobbled yes, their legs wobbling. and wobbled their belly to see how much they wobble. <laughs> that's, you know that's not energy healing, right? You're just wobbling them at that point. <laughs> And of course, if you're trying to like try try to imagine the environment in which the shoulder wiggle therapy would go on, and you just nailed it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like listeners, just close your eyes, picture the scene, picture the room you're in, picture the the decor, picture the painting that's on the wall. Every single one of you listeners is now picturing the painting on the wall that was a Native American ghost fucking a buffalo ghost. You're absolutely <laughs> right. That's what was on okay, the wall. Okay. Absolutely. You. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. And and honestly, do yourself a favor on this one, just in case you think we're exaggerating. This is on Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, go to twenty one oh four. You only have to watch one minute of this shit. You'll get the shoulder wiggles. And while you're doing that, we're going to take a quick break. But we'll be back soon with even more of The Healing Field. And so I said, those are pictures of your feet I found online. You can't be mad at me. I feel like she can, though. Hey guys, oh my god, Eli, what are you doing? I, I'm just, I'm, 
I'm taking care of my teeth. What's up, Marsh? Yeah, but by brushing with, what is that? Is that a candy it's bar? It's a candy bar. It's a candy bar. Oh, thank God it's a candy bar. Yeah, yeah. Well, Noah said candy's good for your teeth, so. No, no, Eli said some gum is good for your teeth. Okay, Noah. Gum is good for your teeth. Some- no, no, that's actually true. The, the American Dental Association recommends chewing sugar-free gum for 20 minutes after meals. Gum, candy, what's the difference? Well, sugar. Eli, not all gum is created equal. Some might come in fancy packaging, but they only cover up bad breath. Others are loaded with sugar. They can wreak havoc on your teeth. Oh, like brushing with a candy bar. Yes, exactly like brushing with a candy bar. Luckily, the oral care experts at Quip have made a gum that stands out from the pack, one that can help prevent cavities. Oh, also, it tastes great, too. Quip gum can help prevent cavities and freshen breath when chewed for 20 minutes after eating. It's sugar-free, and it has tooth-friendly xylitol with zero calories. And to satisfy your taste buds, Quip added a long-lasting mint flavor, crunchy tri-layer design, and stamped it all with a classic Quip tongue. Plus, the slim, travel-ready dispenser... Available in five colors, metal or plastic, packs and protects up to 10 gum pieces at a time and fits in just about any purse or pocket for on the go. And in a world where you need to be extra safe and hygienic, the quick release button means you can still share it with friends. No wrappers, no hands, no hassles. Yeah, Quip sent us one to try and it shoots out all sleek and cool like... Pew! Nice. That sounds cool, but I'm always running out of gum, so... well. Now you can add a gum refill plan for a gift that keeps on giving all year round. Quip's customizable subscription lets you chew and share at your own pace and not worry about running out. Plus, the more you buy, the more you save with bulk discounts on extra gum packs. Spread good oral health habits this season and join over 5 million mouths already using Quip. Get chewing for less than $2 per gum pack. And if you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you can get a free plastic dispenser with any refill plan. That's a free dispenser at getquip.com slash awful. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. Quip, the good habits company. All right, guys, you convinced me. Now, Noah, let me get that gum dispenser so I can brush my teeth with that. That's not... Come on. You know what? Sure. Sure. Ow, hard. hard. Yeah, man, it's, it's made of plastic. Noah said. Look, you could just take his company card away and then he can't buy more websites. But he memorized the numbers. <sighs> Marsh, 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 Noah. Hey, Eli, what's up? Amazing new business idea. Already know. We sell placebos. <sighs> you want to sell placebos? Yeah. I mean, think about this week's movie, right? You can sell people a book of pictures and because of the placebo effect, bam, they, they just get better. Right, look, I already bought a bunch of Skittles and I put them into these bottles. Right, Eli, that is not how the placebo effect works. Yeah, it is. You you tell someone something will cure them and then they like placebo effect and then they're better, right? Well, no, no, look, the placebo effect, it's it's largely misunderstood. People don't placebo effect themselves better. They they just think they're better in the very, very short term. Just they think that. Oh, I I thought that they they actually got better because they thought they were better. No, no. The, the placebo effect is actually complicated by the fact that a lot of people do just, you know, get better from stuff regardless of the placebo effect or anything else. They, they do? Yeah, and like that number's much larger when you consider that the group being examined is everyone who's ever been sick ever. Or, or lied about being sick. Or lied about it, exactly, yeah. Oh, so, so placebos aren't like magic, self-brain healing things? No. No, they are not. Yeah, I mean, if they were, that wouldn't be a problem. They'd just be a different kind of medicine. Oh, right, because it would work. Mm. Damn. Do you guys want like 40 pill bottles of Skittles? I mean, I'll have some Skittles, yeah, sure. Do you have peanut M&Ms? I do, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Not not a fan. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up by talking about, correct me if I'm wrong, heart thinking. (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me just say, credit where credit is due. I did not see, well, what if your heart really does do all the thinking as one of the arguments of this movie? Jesus, she comes out and she's like, well, you know, a lot of people think that the brain could beat up all of the other organs, but the heart has... Raiden powers can shoot light. <laughs> oh, this annoyed me so much. The exact quote is, people used to think the brain was the most powerful organ, but studies are showing the heart generates the largest electromagnetic signal in the body. What? But, right. <laughs> but 
That isn't a but sentence, though, <laughs> any more than people think the middle of the highway is a dangerous place, but my kitchen has way more knives. It's like, right, <laughs> only if, that only works if the number of knives is the only possible <laughs> measurement of danger. Then. What? <laughs> like, what the fuck was that supposed to be? Like? <laughs> but yeah, but before you can even get your head around the heart thinking bullshit, she starts in on the placebo effect. Ooh. So they're going to not know what that means on purpose for a few minutes. Which you'd think of all the things they wouldn't want to bring up. It's the placebo effect. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's like a third to two thirds of all healing is due to the placebo effect. Mm, no, it isn't. Placebo effect <laughs> is the most powerful medicine we have. Mm, no, it isn't. None of these things are true. I mean, it's equally powerful to what you have. Yeah, I was going to say, March, be fair. Placebo effect is the most powerful medicine she has. <laughs> we. That's a very good point. I mean, bear in mind she's saying this just after she argued that she doesn't use her brain for thinking. So this is entirely <laughs> Yeah, consistent. exactly. Well, Marsh, her heart receives signals way before the brain s sometimes, like beat. <laughs> oh, God, that annoyed me as well. Because, yeah, my eyes receive information earlier yeah. than the brain. <laughs> you know, my nose receives information <laughs> earlier than my brain. That's how sensing works. That's right. why we have sense organs. It doesn't mean I do most of my thinking nasally. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. My ass knows I'm shitting sometimes before my brain does. Come on, man. Certainly in Eli's case. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Oh, would that it did. Would that it did, Marsh. <laughs> and just as just as you're thinking to yourself about how dumb Lynn's brain is, she comes in and says, the amazing thing about our brain is it's a little bit dumb. And I'm like, I'm going to take the over again. I got to take the over <laughs> one more time. Oh, and is this where she explains the sham surgery thing? <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. This it is. This is fucking amazing. So I had not heard about this. I barely Googled it because who has the time? But <laughs> I think I know exactly what happened with these sham surgeries. I called together this meeting of the IRB board, which Eli couldn't be bothered to look up. So he assumes that there is a gavel involved. Next up, Michael Marshall would like to propose a, a, sh a sham surgery, uh, Mr. Marshall. Yeah, thanks. So, right, the idea is I get a bunch of people who need surgery, right? But then I don't give them surgery. Instead, I just slice them up, stitch them up, and see if they get better. A and you want to do this because... Well, to see if surgery works, obviously. Oh, okay, but like surgery does stuff. Like, like we know it. It works because of the stuff that happens, you know, during the operation. Right. Or does it? You know, like, what if what? you only got better from an appendectomy because you think you got one, right? What if it's that? Well, it, it feels really, really unlikely that it would be that. Sure, but there's only one way to find out, right? I feel like there are better ways to find out if surgery works than letting you slice people open and lie to them. That's a great point. Really? Like, what are they? Uh, I, I, uh, you know what? I, I can't think of any. Go ahead. Uh, get to chopping. Yes. You know, this really happened, apparently. Yes, it did. Perfectly. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, I don't think that. Did I, I nail it? No, I don't. Did I nail it? That's, that's, exactly, that's exactly what happened. And the thing is, this, this arthroscopic knee osteoarthritis study is such a pain. And it's in partly it's a pain that's spread through skeptical circles because of Ben Goldacre's book, Bad Science, which I think mentions it and, and calls this a miraculous placebo because you did the surgery, you did the sham surgery, and both of those worked out exactly the same. And the thing is, even when Lynn explains this, she kind of gives it away without realizing because she, she says that you took two thirds of people and give them surgery and a third of people and give them nothing. And the surgery didn't work. The sham and the nothing worked. And the thing is, why would they operate on two thirds of people? It's because there were three arms of the, the treatment here, three arms of the, of the study. There was surgery, there was fake surgery, and there was physio. And so the group that didn't have the operation got more physio, which is why they use physio for that now, not surgery. Right. Because what you did was you did a actual bit of surgery, a fake bit of surgery, they performed exactly the same. The answer there isn't to say fake surgery works, it's to say that particular operation's bullshit, don't do it anymore. And they don't anymore. <laughs> right, right, exactly, right. They, the, the fact that they found out that something didn't work doesn't mean that the fucking control group it was miraculously healed. Yeah, 
So they go on to explain that they say that don't think I don't want to get cancer because all your brain hears is cancer. Right. <laughs> That's the whole that. And I'm just like, OK, so whatever we do, don't think about Stay Puff Marshmallow, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wrote in this. It was Bruce Lifton who said that, you know, if, if you say I don't want cancer, the mind doesn't listen to the I don't want bit. And I thought, I don't want Bruce Lipton to die in a fire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't want him to. I don't want him to die in a fire. Oh, can he sue you for that? He can. He's I don't want him to die in a fire. I do not want him to die in a fire. <laughs> Get your I don't want Bruce Lipton to die in a fire t-shirt <laughs> at marshdidcovid.com. Also, so, okay. At one point, one of the women says that cancer is increasing exponentially. <laughs> yeah, that is a lady who thinks exponential is just an adjective you can use. Uh, apparently, yeah, I checked. It's not. No, like they have charts and shit. it's down. Like that. that Any, anyway, yeah, okay. <laughs> I wanted the camera to pan around, and she just has a visibly growing lump on her back. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, <laughs> cancer is growing exponentially. And just, oh, she blows up like the thing at the end of Akira. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but so now it's time for us to finally get around to talking about all those damn toxins. <laughs> I have a question. Do you have to wear the tang suit? Like, <laughs> at what point do they give you the tang suit in bullshit? <laughs> Is it a choice that you make? Because they all end up doing them. Right, right. No, the, you can tell the really advanced bullshitters because of their little tang suits. And, and just to be clear, what this this movie argues at this point, we've been through the ancient wisdom stuff, we've been through how old all this kind of stuff is. So this movie is literally arguing holistic medicine, which is new, but it's been around for centuries slash millennia. Mm -hmm. It is helping us deal with modern illnesses like cancer, which are getting exponentially more common. <laughs> that is the argument here. Yeah, right, exactly. And they're like, and, and they would listen to you say that and go, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. These new advances in something that's been around forever are helping stop the exponential growth of something that's also been around forever as long as this holistic medicine has. It's self-defeating even just by stating it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, apparently maybe they're trying to distract us from that with that one dude's awesome karate walk. <laughs> <laughs> so we've talked about 3D Spinny Guy and you could make the argument that 3D Spinny Guy is the star of this show, but you could also make that argument about... Tang suit karate walk guy, right? Not, that, oh, he, not, not yeah. that he is the star of the show, but that his karate walk is the star of the fucking show. Oh, 100%. And I'm just impressed they got a take where he isn't whispering under his breath, leave the kitty alone. Leave the kitty alone. <laughs> Sneaky kitty. Sneaky kitty. <laughs> And it is really worth pointing out at this point that every single person we've seen who has said your health is controlled by how positive you are about stuff, every single one of them has been a wealthy, middle-aged white American. Every yes. single <laughs> one of them. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And none of them over the age of 60. Not a lot of interviews in Flint, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then just when you're thinking to yourself, wow, I certainly couldn't take these people less seriously than this, could I? We get the video where they're all oming together. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn once again references just some vague, like a number of scientists all over the world are increasingly believing X, right? She keeps doing that. It's like, there's so much evidence. I couldn't even name any of so because I forget there's so many of them. Yeah, it's like our most recent research into quantum physics. Like, really, Lynn? Our? You're doing a lot of our research into quantum physics, are you? Really, Lynn? Illustrated, I'll point out, by the 3D spinny guy, this time shooting out neck lasers. Wow! Yes. <laughs> you would have thought, man, that he would, if, you, if he knew he had neck lasers, you'd have thought he'd already pulled it out, but no, he still has new tricks for us. That's right. No, you, you keep that in the, in, the, in the bag for near the end, like mm -hmm. the big robot at the end of Power Rangers, you know? You, you, right. you do all of the fighting, <laughs> then bang, sword to finish it at the end every time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So and, and I also want to point out that at one point she's talking about her like bullshit therapy and says, well, you know, it goes way beyond the placebo effect, which means that they occasionally selectively do know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> right. She explains that the received wisdom, her words in uh, modern medicine is that alternative medicine doesn't work. And I'm like, well, it was received by scientific observation <laughs> yeah but by, by alternative medicine that's who gave us that it doesn't work yeah, right we were like hey do your thing and you were like oh this is bullshit and we were like all right message received thank you i also love 
that Lynn has a little video of her holding up a test tube at this point. Yes, in the movie. right. See, see, but she doesn't know how to do it right. Like, look, I do not claim to be a test tube expert, but she's very clearly what I would do if I got hired for like a day job on a commercial somewhere uh, as scientist four, where she's just like, hmm, this test tube needs to be held up to the light and then placed back into its container full of science. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Quantum energy healing works. And I think this is a bit where she talked about energy healing and she says you get a lot of energy out of your dominant hand. And I, I wrote, yeah, but presumably you get less energy out of your less dominant hand, but it feels like someone else's energy. So it's, it's nice for a change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, and then this is also where they claim that there are, there was at least 150 excellent gold standard double blind placebo tests demonstrating the robust effect of energy healing. Yeah, and it's like there might be a lot of gold standard randomized double blind studies on energy healing, but they don't agree with you, Lynn. Right. They 100% well, yeah, right. don't no. agree with you. Well, it, but they keep showing like this one page from one bullshit alt medicine journal or whatever, but it's always the same page. And it's just like, come on, that's an alt med journal, right? Anything you show us, you could keep showing us other studies. Yeah, it's it's a it's always the same page of Beverly's study. And I think yeah. the study even then was Qigong applied to end stage AIDS patients. So just in case you think this is all harmless fun, the study they keep showing us is when they tried to chi away someone's end stage AIDS. Jesus yep. Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, I, I had to write my notes at this one point when they started talking about homeodynamics. I had to write, is she just saying potato, 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 or is that my brain doing it defensively? <laughs> <laughs> And, and this is also the bit where it says that they studied 200 modalities of energy healing. And I just really want to see them come up with that list. So it's like, okay, so um, right hand, obviously dominant hand, that's yeah, one. Well, Left hand, there's two. Less energy. Um, waving both hands, that's three. Mm-hmm. Um, finger guns, yeah, okay, that's four. <laughs> um, just 196 to go. Um, I don't know. Right, hear me out. What if we included... Dave, for the last time, you can't include your penis. <laughs> You're making it really hard to get to 200, Larry. <laughs> what about head-based flowers, guys? <laughs> Jesus and Christ. Th- she also does a little bit of like the, oh, I once cured a person with a... I, uh, this lady came to me. She had a stroke and her brain was oh, dead. Oh, God, she fuck was you in the spot in so the much. Grave, and then oh. I boiled her skull like an egg with my <laughs> magic powers. I want some stories of bio healing going wrong. That's when you'd fucking convince me, right? If she if she had been like, so I placed my hands on either side of her head and it just exploded. It exploded because I was, you know, I was I was thinking about Dynasty and how I didn't really like how the plot's been sort of focused on the younger couples lately. And yep, she just she just vaporized into a blue mist. So yeah, you gotta watch it with this shit. <laughs> that story about healing a woman's stroke, that's an amazing story. That would have been way more impressive. If it was the woman telling us it, yeah, and not right. you recounting having done it. Well, yeah, I mean, at one point, Lynn cites this. She says this one study. She starts starts talking about magnetic energy emanating from healers or whatever. But like all the specifics we get is this one study didn't even narrow it down to a century or hemisphere. I, I think it was in Canada, so you wouldn't have read it. You wouldn't oh, have read okay. the study. It's the Canadian. <laughs> This is when they say that the biofield moves at the speed of light again. And I was just like, is the movie on repeat? If this is hell, someone in red pajamas needs to tell me. That's the rules. It's like being a cop. Yeah, at that point, I did write, uh, if this was a B. Reesman interview, I'd be like actively hurrying him along a bit now. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, just to try and... We've heard, you've had enough space on this now. Let's come on. Let's get into it. Yeah, okay. So now we're going to check in with the highly respected School of Energy Healing, which is meeting at the conference room at the Ramada on Route 26. Oh! As all the best schools do. Yeah, he's a highly respected author of several CDs. (laughs) Yes! Ron... Ron Levin and Ron, I can't tell you much. I can't promise you much in the world, dear listener, but Ron wrote his own introduction because it is seven (laughs) paragraphs. Ron of the Healing Touch Light is a psychic, telepathic, telephathic, telomathic, Mm -hmm. and he's got a seven inch penis. Trust us. (laughs) Clear everything. At one point, it says this is the actual goddamn line. Ron has been tested and found to be a running at the master healer energy frequency. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Brent, I'm sorry, just he's running at a frequency. Even that all by itself is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> 
And, and the Claire thing, it says he's born Clairaudian, Clairvoyant, Clairsentient, Claircognizant, mm-hmm. Claire's Accessories. He's just all of the Claire, Claire Danes. He's all of the Claire's there. But like, why is nobody ever born Claire Nosmic? Right? It's always Clairvoyant, Clairaudian. It's yeah. never Claire, no- Claire Nosmic. Like, I smell dead people <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so all right but he's got this story he's gonna he went and the story starts this is great right he starts talking about you know, i've studied with llamas and i've studied with gurus guarantee and, you he means the animal oh i get it <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes he goes but then i woke up one day and my groin hurt and i'm like tell me about the gurus man <laughs> <laughs> But he he goes to the doctor. This is his story of of escaping Western medicine. Yeah, mm-hmm. I went to the doctor, and he was like, "Yeah, man, you fucking tried to do weird tang suit sex with your you know life partner Jalilian, and you <laughs> threw out your dick." And he's like, "Do you super best friend promise I'll never get a hernia again?" And the doctor was like, "What? No, no, that's fucking <laughs> stupid." <laughs> Yeah, he became a woo because his doctor didn't care to get into the emotional aspects of his hernia. <laughs> right, yes. But well, so he had a vision where he was sewing up his hernia with magical silver thread. And then he's like, so I did that. And I'm like, wait, what? Wait, <laughs> but did you actually? In his mind. Because <laughs> you're junk. He's gross looking, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted it to pan down to just like his pussy infected, <laughs> sewn over like your grandma trying to fix a sock she made on her first try. <laughs> oh, God. It, it's so ama- it's so lud- ludicrous to, to realize that this guy is turning having a hernia into an inspirational origin story for his superpower. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> Oh, the MCU has really lost its way. Yeah. <laughs> he also says that he had a Masonic teacher. Yeah. Is that a term in Wu or does that mean a member of the Masons? Yeah. Because I'm just picturing him going down to some sad, empty beard hall to talk to an 87-year-old <laughs> guy in a silly hat who's like, yes, yeah, so I dreamed last night I sewed my dick up with thread. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, man. We're doing a fundraiser for a kid's baseball team. Yes, <laughs> you got to stop coming here and tell me about your dreams. <laughs> Do you think like a Masonic Reiki practitioner just like holds their wrists in a slightly different way when they're doing the Reiki? And like, if you know, you know, and that's how you can recognize a fellow Masonic Reiki practitioner. Yeah, they have some secret Reiki waves. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) All right. So now they're going to drop their best evidence on us. One of their best studies ever on whether waving your hands miles away can cure people. Uh, Totally can. Cured AIDS. (laughs) (laughs) The dark study. The Targ study is like the short films I made in college. If you are a woo practitioner, you want to be as far away from them. You want as little people to know about them as possible. Because the Targ study, and Marsh, you can explain this way better, but the Targ study only proved that people who got prayed for felt bad about not feeling better Mm. and that... Be hacking exists. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like a big part of it was uh, that people felt pressured into expecting that they should get a better result, and actually, in part of it, start to performing worse. But even even when they introduce this, Lynn gives the game away again because she said they did a study before all of that new medicine today was available. It's like right because that medicine saves their lives, and right. your, your thing doesn't. Because if it did, they wouldn't have done the medicine afterwards. They wouldn't have invented <laughs> right. the medicine if your thing worked. And fun fact. <laughs> During the TARG study, new drugs came out. So they literally unblinded a huge percentage of the study. They were like, hey, I know you're doing your little bullshit thing, but we actually have to give them real medicine. So you lose these like 40 people. We actually have to save their lives with real shit. Well, so and and, and that's the thing, right? This study took place in the late 90s. She says it took place in the 80s before all this medicine came out. That's a fucking lie. That's not a, just a, you know, she got the date wrong, mm. right? She's saying it's before the medicine that it came out in the 90s came out. And intentionally so, because if you know that the medicine came out at that point, then you know the study is bullshit. <laughs> and, and, and of course, what they did is, is exactly what you're talking about. They did pee hacking after they did the study and they found that the only thing that they found was the people that got prayed for did worse. Right. Is then someone suggested, well, why don't we look at every common problem that you can have that's associated with AIDS, every other different kind of thing that can happen. And then we'll ask them to do mood scores and we'll give them quality of life scores. And then we'll only take the things that got better and report on them. 
right? That's what she's talking about. They took 61 variables and they're like, wow, look at these 18 variables that people who were prayed for did better on. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I mean, I haven't seen the details of the study, but I almost guarantee that the majority, if not all of the variables that they got better on were the self-reported outcomes of how's your mood doing? How's your pain? Do you feel as fatigued as you were? Because in almost all of these, that's exactly it, is that it's only self-reported outcomes that are ever eligible for whatever placebo benefit there is or isn't. Right. Or 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 out of the 23 common conditions, you know, like they, there were six of those that they got better on. But, but also mm. it's worth pointing out, though, by the way, there have been efforts to replicate those results and they've never worked. Yeah. Right. That's 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 how you get to, to p hacking. That's how you figure it out because you can define your variables up beforehand once that you have those studies in hand. So it's absolutely disproven bullshit, and any effort to look into it proves that. Yeah. Anywho, which they literally did, by the way, after this study, a guy was like, "Oh shit, maybe this does work." I'll tell you what, I'll get a whole bunch of people, and they were like, "Don't don't do that." Right. Don't you get- <laughs> More. Well, no, the same fucking scientist did the test again at some point and then was like, oh, yeah, okay, no, it was, it, you're right, it was be hacking, my bad. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. And then, and then at that point, this thing becomes a full blown goddamn ad for the healing school, right? At this point, they start <laughs> telling you, like, and for just three easy payments. Of- oh, we could not sound oh. more like an infomercial for this guy's uh, energy school, 100%. They might as well tell you how delicious the food in the cafeteria is. <laughs> but what they do tell you is that the producer joined his cult. Yes, <laughs> That's right. the very next thing we find out. Yes, right. And I'm like, what point do you think you're making about the objectivity <laughs> of the bill? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we've been getting these testimonials throughout, right? People will just show up and say, well, I was never very good at healing myself. But then, you know, so but then we get this one, this the Jewish lady who had the bitchy cousin. Mm. Yes. <laughs> This woman is uncomfortably stereotypical. Noah and Marsha's notes turn so polite at this point. Because this woman, she might as well have a bag of gold and like a baby that she's oh, gently Jesus sucking Christ. the blood out of. I'll tell you, I had a cousin and we did not get along because he brought brisket to my mother's funeral. And I said, I was bringing the brisket. And then four days after I used my magic powers on him, he wrote me a letter saying thank you. I mean, to be honest, the only reason my notes are so polite is because I assumed you were that cousin, Eli. You were the (laughs) difficult person in her life. (laughs) Didn't want to say too much shit about your cousin. Yeah, no, but the story is she used her magic long distance healing powers on her family member that didn't, she didn't get along with, who then sent her a note that said thank you. That's all the note said. Yeah, Mm. I do not believe her. No, that did not happen. Yeah, I believe maybe it ended in K space U. (laughs) And I had this weird sort of meta moment here because they were talking about like, one must forgive the heart to forgive the spirit. And I thought to myself, isn't it weird that like all the deep thoughts are taken over by assholes, right? Like the assholes have dibs on all the deep thoughts. Science Mm. doesn't say deep shit. They say cool stuff like you're made out of stardust, but all the good, like really fun woo shit, that's only by people in tank suits. If you want a wooey thing, you got to talk to a guy in a tank suit. It's a real loss. I don't don't know. I feel like you could get into philosophy, but then, you know, you're a... That's halfway to tank. Yeah, suits, boo right? nerds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, all I thought when uh, when Ron was saying you have to forgive yourself is the way he says that and then looks wistfully in the distance. He's done some serious shit, hasn't he? He's really serious about having stuff to forgive himself for. He's got Andy Wilson on speed dial. <laughs> Well, what I thought is like, I'm always extra suspicious of people who open up on the importance of forgiveness, right? Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you planning on doing? Oh, and we didn't even mention the fucking testimonial of the guy who cured his chronic fatigue syndrome. Mm. I'm like, really? But how is your gluten sensitivity and your cooties doing? And there was the other guy who said he had loads of panic attacks and anxiety. Yes. And then he started to visualize and do this energy stuff. And I said, yeah, but you were suffering from panic attacks and then you learned to calm yourself and meditate and you found that helped. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> That's, fine. That's not controversial. But he's more connected to his heart. Marsh, which is mm-hmm. good. You want all the coronary arteries you can get. <laughs> I, I just really wanted a before picture. He's spraying all over the walls. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta meditate more. So, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Then we, we we hear from this lady who released her. Oh, God. The one, the lady who released her emotional back pain. 
It was so amazing that even her chiropractor couldn't explain <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, this lady is Nancy Newman, which 100% sounds like a pseudonym she made up to stay anonymous. Like, yeah, right. She had to come up with that name on the spot. <laughs> Nancy Newman. New, 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 new man it is, yes. Uh-huh. Yep. And she's like, yeah, I went to my chiropractor and he was like, fuck, are you seeing a different kind of con man? Because your vagina is perfectly front right now. <laughs> Just so you know? <laughs> Perfect. All right. So you're probably thinking to yourself, I don't know. I'm not entirely convinced this is real. Well, how about a little B-roll of China to convince you? Yes, that's That's right. right. It's time to learn about Ki Chong. Did you know that things can be wrong and old and Asian? (laughs) Come on down to... Qui-Gon Jin or whatever the fuck this thing is. <laughs> well, yeah, but what we're actually seeing here is they're saying uh, Qi-Gong originated in China, so here's several shots of stock footage of white people doing it. Yeah, right, not even right. Chinese people doing it. It's just white people doing it in China. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. And this is where we get to meet Qi-Gong Master Gary. Gary! The oh. Qigong man. Yes, exactly. Gary the- wishes so hard that he was ancient and Chinese. Those are his, if, he, if he found a genie, those would be his first two wishes. And his third wish would be to be ancient and Chinese, just in, just in case there was any ambiguity. Oh, Yeah, yeah. And he's, uh, he's also a renowned China scholar, because that's not a protected term. I could... <laughs> <laughs> I, I would guess if you let this guy talk about China for long enough to scholars, he would, in fact, gain some renown. <laughs> and he's also another guy who's the author of numerous CDs and DVDs. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and then he starts. So he's talking about all of the powers of his bullshit Qigong nonsense or whatever. And he's like, well, you know, the, one of the problems that Americans have is that they breathe too much. I'm like, really? Is that? Is that a problem? He's like, yeah, no, my students breathe way, way less often than most people. I'm like, is that better? <laughs> okay, be honest, Marsha Noah. Did you try and slow down your breaths and see it was super stupid? Because yeah. I absolutely did that at this point in the movie. I lasted about 15 seconds and I thought, mm, not for me, this. <laughs> oh, I started to pass out. because He's like, you'll breathe at seven breaths per minute. So I'm like... <sighs> so i did enough dumb yoga shit in my life that yes i got myself down to where i could breathe like i could take two or fewer than two breaths a minute at at one point in my life i probably could still do that i can i read a lot of names at the end of skate i would pass out and shit myself on this podcast (laughs) but you can do that but you can't do anything else like you can get down to two breaths a minute but you can't do anything else while doing that right well yeah that's the only thing you're doing (laughs) at that point it's also completely fucking useless. And then we get another one of these, like um, he starts talking about one of his students that, you know, he cured of her arthritis with his Ki Chong. And I'm like, oh, really? She did light exercise every day and her arthritis got better? <laughs> yeah, exactly. For a year. Yeah, light exercise for a year. And that's that's not magic. That's literally what a doctor would recommend. Yeah. And the patient would reject it because it would seem like they weren't getting treatment. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, what if I told you that exercise was magical? Chinese. <laughs> Only if I can pay you more money than I can afford. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do we get to wear tang suits? We do get to wear tang oh, suits. Oh, okay. Yes, well, we yeah. Can. No, I'm in. Well, okay. But so, but that's the thing is he's like, you know, anecdote about me, you know, making a woman's arthritis feel better. Conclusion, breathing Chinesely cures diabetes. <laughs> right? Because we hear about the diabetic guy who also got better when he started exercising. Yeah, this is Bob, who, first of all, Bob is the guy who stands behind Jesus in the Big Lebowski in the bowling scene. <laughs> that, that, that is Bob. Um, he had a blood sugar <laughs> of 791, which is really, really high. And then he was put on insulin and he started doing light exercise regularly for over a period of months. And his blood sugar started to come down because he was no longer having a lifestyle that had him have a blood sugar level of 791. Right. And I just have one little note, which is that Gary, Grandmaster Gary, has bought himself the wrong size black belt. Like there's so much comedy (laughs) in this one shot because one, all black belts are made up. I know that I don't don't try and jujitsu me in the neck or face, please. But like he bought himself a little black belt because he's a Qigong master, but he bought like the medium. So it's a fucking it's a black thong. (laughs) It's barely tied together in an angry knot under his gut. It's pretty fantastic. 
Yeah, so we, we remind everybody that their diabetes is their fault. Uh, we get a few more testimonials from we get another guy who had self-diagnosed chronic fatigue syndrome that he cured, which is nice. Yeah, he, he was exhausted a lot and then he did regular exercise and now he finds he's got more energy. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. <laughs> and hey, if you want to go down a rabbit hole of sad, Google chronic fatigue syndrome because it's just a series of sadder and sadder tumblers offering worse and worse advice. Ah, oh, it's like look, cr chronic fatigue. There are a lot of people out there who are suffering from something, and we don't have a good name for it. And some, and sometimes those symptoms get uh, you know collected together under chronic fatigue. But when they're collected in that way, they just become a massive target for any bullshit artist to try and hit. Yes. So like, there's a lot of people who've got a lot of stuff going wrong with them that they can't figure out, and that's really sad. But the fact that they're being exploited is the really, really extra sad bit. Right. Yes. Exactly. But don't worry, if you're going to get too sad, this series will literally end with a shot of Master Gary getting scared away by geese. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, this is what happened. I guarantee it. I would bet all my money, all my worldly goods that Gary was like, get me doing my kigong with these geese. He gets within six feet of them and the geese are like, fuck off. And he's like, oh, sorry. God, their energy fields, uh, their bio ha energy fields were too strong for my, Charlie, uh, got inside my field. Me, 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 me. So, so trying to <laughs> laser the geese away. <laughs> well, pew, pew, well, he pew. can't break because at this point they come in, the narrator comes in and says, I love this sentence so goddamn much. This is the other Qigong master, Ken. He says, Ken's brainwaves changed more than 70% while practicing Qigong. <laughs> what would that mean? Like, I feel like that's probably true of sneezing, isn't it? I don't... Yeah, what? it's like he his brainwaves changed by 70%, but like my brain at rest will look very different to me slowly moving around and thinking about Qigong because right. my brain is doing very different things at that time. But no, 70% different. The other thing it says, which is great, it says he also lets off strong gamma waves when he's thinking about uh, or practicing <laughs> yes. Qigong, which, are, which it says are linked with the prevention of dementia and obviously the creation of Incredible Hulks. And <laughs> I didn't know gamma rays were so linked with the prevention of dementia. I really hope Bruce Banner like at least recognizes the silver lining that he won't get dementia. Right. Like, yes, he'll turn into a massive green <laughs> rage monster and smash everything up, but you'll remember it. So, yay. <laughs> look, no one wants the Alzheimer's Hulk, right? <laughs> you wouldn't like me when I'm. Oh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> oh, are you my grandson? <laughs> Hulk smash. And and just in case, by the way, you're you're still doubting how vicious this movie is. You're like, well, maybe they're mistaken and not evil. One of the fucking talking heads shows up to talk about her research that shows that even if it doesn't seem like the woo is working, you have to do it for at least two years sometimes <laughs> before you see any results. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're an energy healer, you got to take classes too. I'm just like, selling to the seller, smart business, long <laughs> tail. I get it. Yeah. Right. And, and they also say, you know, more and more doctors are making referrals to Tai Chi practitioners. It's like, yes, but surely as light forms of exercise, not as it can cure your cancer. Right. It's right. Just keep moving. If you if it gets you moving and you need to move, do that, man. It's fine. Yeah. I would love to watch that doctor meeting, though, where he's just like, all right, well, looks like you've got cancer here. Um, How about a white guy named Gary? Do you want to do a little slow <laughs> bullshit dance with him? No, no, chemo. Oh, you're going to go no? chemo, all too. Right, okay. chemo. All right, chemo. Well, right. I guess we're doing chemo again. Because... <laughs> The one thing this film has has overwhelmingly proven is that it is impossible to do Qigong on camera without looking over the fucking moon that you're being filmed. Every <laughs> single person in this is like, mm -hmm, you see this? Look how slow I'm going. Yeah, it's fucking brilliant. Right? <laughs> they are very much so still like going to go into the movie. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I have to go bitch at a terminally ill person for not wish thinking hard enough. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Can the byproduct of the quantum coupling integrate cohesively? Will the frequencies of cellular respiration resonate comprehensively? Can the chromodynamic spirit field renormalize in time? Find out the answers to absolutely nothing and less when we return for the verbose conclusion of The Healing Field. Hi, I'm Greg Kyler. And I'm Mike Mikeson. Are you tired of Asia cornering the market on ancient wisdom? Do you want to be the master of something untestable and therefore fail-proof? Well, then you need White Guy Woo. That's right, White Guy Woo. The 100% Caucasian brand of bullshit straight from your culture to your wallet. We've got courses like Punching Holes in Walls for Healing and Devil's Advocate Therapy. 
But that's not all. White Guy Wu comes with its own brand of mystical Caucasian food supplements. Chronic fatigue? Take two hot pockets and call me in the morning. And best of all, with White Guy Wu, there's no need to appropriate other cultures' fashions with poorly fitting kimonos or karate outfits that you bought online. That's right. Each White Guy Wu Grandmaster has issued the standard tracksuit and headband of your great ancestors. White Guy Wu. Damn it. Ah, I just realized it's CrossFit. Oh, fuck, it is CrossFit. Oh, God, every time. Oh, we invented CrossFit again. <laughs> That's amazing. Like. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action by learning about the power of mental imagery with the unfortunately named Jerry Epstein. <laughs> Epstein is totally different name. And look. No one in this movie looks healthy, but <laughs> they don't look Jerry Epstein unhealthy. He looks like Anthony Hopkins auditioning for Sling Blade. <laughs> he looks so ill that I figured he actually was the corpse of Jeffrey Epstein come back under a pseudonym and like, in a sort of, uh, gone undercover. <laughs> so, yeah, but he, he met a magic lady in Israel and she was better at healing people than medicine was. So... He started doing her thing. Yeah, and just to be clear, he's described as a leading pioneer in mental imagery. What? So he's an expert at imagining things? <laughs> <laughs> We're all that, mate. Have you played pretend with this motherfucker? He's got spaceships and space pirates. <laughs> His imagination will fuck your imagination. Up. Doesn't even need porn. He just directs it all in the dome. Yeah, he's like, yeah, no, this, my, this actually, this medical practice goes all the way back to ancient Egypt. I'm like, where all the best medical practices got their start. <laughs> his reason is my favorite <laughs> thing in the movie. We know the ancient Egyptians used mental imagery because they wrote in hieroglyphics. <laughs> oh, is that the argument he was making? They're little pictures. <laughs> because the history of images goes way back. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we've been doing images ever since the eyeball evolved. I don't know if you know. That. <laughs> and then, and then he's got a fucking like write us a prescription for imagery. He's like, "All right, so what you need to do is you need to imagine things in your mind." I'm not gonna lie to you. Sometimes people need 10, 20 seconds of imagining for twenty one days, uh, maybe a college <laughs> month. I don't know, a semester, a semester. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. And then okay, so, but he's got a testimonial, right? He's like, you know, well, here's a guy whose life I saved. He was about to lose his leg. And I'm like, mm, what? Which was it? <laughs> what did you save there? Oh, well, there's a couple of testimonials. The first one, actually, there's a lady who comes in and says, mental imagery is like a treasure chest that you can reach into and pull out anything that you need. And it's like, that's that's not what a che treasure chest is. That's, no. <laughs> that's just a regular chest. You're describing chests. <laughs> A treasure chest specifically has treasure in it, goddammit. <laughs> we live in a society. <laughs> <laughs> and she she explains that she's an artist and mental imagery helps her draw things. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All of these testimonials are, I was hating my life. I was in a really bad place. And then I found this. And you know what? I guarantee 100% that some of these people are currently QAnon followers. I guarantee right. it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. They've gone through Flat Earth. They've come straight out the other side into QAnon. But then we get our best talking head for the mental imagery, the wasted heart transplant. <laughs> oh, right. Jesus Christ, this fucking guy. Yeah, right. So he had a heart transplant and then he got better. <laughs> because he also did mental imagery. But the issue he was having specifically was that after a couple of days of the heart transplant, there was a complication. And the complication was that his legs started to reject the heart. Is that a thing? It's just, I don't think It's that's randomly a thing. kicking him in the chest. Ah, <laughs> can, can a transplanted organ be rejected by one single limb and nothing else? I don't think that was a thing. Like they take a vote or something. It's like, come on, man, we voted on this heart. We all agreed, Larry. 
<laughs> I don't think that's a thing. But yeah, but well, I can tell you whether or not it's a thing, the magical bullshit imagineering that uh, fucking Jerry is selling is not how it got fixed. <laughs> They're like, oh, well, he regenerated his nervous system. Like, we all do that. He has to, he has to story top the man who is giving him credit for fixing his heart transplant rejection. <laughs> he, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> interrupts him. He's like, well, actually, so I, I have to step in here. I regrew your nerves by by telling you to think of a flower, frosting filling your hip, or whatever the fuck I told you. Yeah, he goes, he goes so, even further. He says, I, I gave him just one of the systems we have for nerve regeneration. And that's such a weird flex to make out that you've got multiple ways of doing it. It's like, yeah, you did that one, but I could have given you one of it, a million others. I've got I've got them coming out of my ass. Honestly, there's just so many different <laughs> right. ways. Why would you bother learning a second one? Right? Like, if I could just <laughs> regenerate people's like lost limbs and shit, anytime I spent learning a second method of doing that, would be not spent regenerating people's <laughs> lost limbs. Yeah, exactly. and shit. Oh, and, and then we find out what Greg does for, for a living as well, because he, he goes back to his life and he says, and you know, I'm a big band leader, so I feel I can go back to living again. So, mm, I'm not convinced it was living before. But <laughs> before <then. laughs> yeah, so then, okay. So then we check in with Greg's transplant surgeon who confirms all this, right? That it was the magic and not the transplant that saved him. And I'm just like, yeah, this may have seemed impressive at some point, but this whole like he's a doctor, so he can't be stupid thing died during Ben Carson's presidential campaign. So <laughs> no longer impressed. Right. Well, and luckily he saves us from being too worried. He's like, uh, yeah, no, I'm a doctor who's recommending this bullshit, but don't worry. I. I also do it. So I'll probably die of cancer or whatever the fuck is going on with me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And he's yet another dude telling us about the wealth of evidence without citing any of it. They, they do show us one bit of evidence. So they flash up a study on screen. They say science is demonstrating this groundbreaking research. And to illustrate that, they flash up a 1997 edition of the Journal of Alternative Complementary Therapies. Yeah. So that is their groundbreaking <laughs> science. It's 23 years old and in a bullshit <laughs> magazine. <laughs> so, all right. And so now it's time for us to move on to sound healing and we're going to do that with the comic book bad guy named Melody Gabler. Mm -hmm. Who was fucking Melody Gabler and how did she get some time in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that Melody's bullshit is more bullshit than the other bullshit. That's physically impossible, right? There is no numbers <laughs> right, yeah. lower than zero or whatever, but she should not have followed the cure your heart transplant guy because she's just like, well, you know, I just, hey, I have a singing bowl. Wang, wang. That's it. <laughs> That's just, my thing. She doesn't even put her heart into it. Yeah. She's like, well, you know, I give vibrational sound workshops. I'm like, if you want to impress me, give vibrationless sound workshops. Lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the thing is, she cannot be filmed. She has no idea how to be filmed without looking directly down the lens of the camera every yes. single time. There's times when she's looking around trying to find the camera so she can stare right down the middle of it and give the director a fucking heart attack. Your notes telling her to stop looking at the camera were my everything as I watched it as I went through this scene, Mars. <laughs> Yeah, but so she she explains that your DNA can be, her words, enlivened and balanced by sound vibrations. I like it when my DNA is enlivened. I got to be honest. That's <laughs> kind of a turn on. Oh, also, we get a shot of her. This is not the funniest shot. They will get funnier each time we see her, but we see her playing the instruments mm -hmm. and she manages to be bad at the gong. I didn't know you could be bad at the gong until I saw Melody Gabler miss a gong twice. Oh, God damn it. It's the big circle. Come on, Melody. Uh, every time we see them, their instruments get more and more comical. At one point, her, her husband, Rich, is blowing a massive didgeridoo while she's hitting a gong. And I just thought this feels like, a, like an avant-garde art performance, but at a local community theatre. It just feels <laughs> like, and like there's like a, a half a dozen people in the audience. And when it, they think it's in the middle of, at the end of a song, they start giving a little polite clap and say, no, no, it's, it's <laughs> no, oh, still oh, going sorry, on. Song yeah, still sorry. going on. That was just a, a gap in the song. Okay, okay. Oh, I, I will carry many regrets with me to the grave, but chief among them will be that we don't get to hear what this fuck show sounds like, right? Because he's playing a didgeridoo and she's hitting a gong, which means 
bang, bang. And everyone in that room is like, yup, this sure is helping my anxiety. And then later as well, it cuts back to them and he's blowing an even bigger curved tube while leaning to the side and tickling some tubular bells with his fingers. And I promise what happened here was it's like when you see people take stills of porn actors mid-orgy and then Photoshop them into other activities. And that's what this guy was doing. That's where they yeah. got this guy from. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a didgeridoo he was blowing and it's not Tubli Bells that he was just tickling away at. It's just that's All what right. they made him look like he's doing. All right. Dr. Seuss would look at these instruments and be like, come on, you're fucking with me, right? With these? <laughs> it's kind of silly. Yeah, oh God. And then there's this one testimonial that I have to point out because it's, first of all, because it's from Lady Danny DeVito, right? This woman is just this absolutely Danny DeVito, but it's a lady. And then she, and she's trying to talk about how the sound therapy fixed her migraines, but she keeps calling them migrants. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so she says after the sound therapy, quote, immediately my migrants have diminished about 90%. <laughs> this is Anne Ekman, right? Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. The one with the wig. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. it, it's a wig that looks like it was designed to test your no bullying resolve. Whatever resolve you have not to bully, it was designed to test it. Like, she gets debilitating migraines, and I can only assume her hair is an attempt to keep those migraines out. <laughs> Man, did my no bullying resolve melt away under this woman's wig. It looks like a scene from a movie where an alien tries on a wig for a first time, and they've got to be like, no, Marklar, on your head. On your head. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, okay, by now the movie has realized that we were dying to try a little of this energy healing for ourselves. So we're going to go through, we're going to cycle through the experts and they're going to give us a few exercises that we can try at home. Now, spoiler alert, most of them won't. <laughs> right, like that's the whole theme, and then they, but but most of them will just sit there and say bullshit woo words until they stop filming. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, for the record, I think it's important for people to know these exercises are the first television my son ever watched. <laughs> my wife brought him downstairs and stood there and officially these guys being like, you got a picture pink in your mind is the first screen <laughs> that has ever been in front of my child's eyes. <laughs> so in 25 years when he's calling himself Vinushnu the Amazing, I have no one to blame but myself in this movie. <laughs> all right. All right. And our patrons. OK, yeah, good exactly. to know. So, yeah. So we start with Ron Levine. He's going to guide us through a meditation. Yeah. And it's it's just a regular meditation, right? Like they they dress it up all fancy, but it's just like right now, breathe and imagine the breath going down through your body and out. That's it, basically. Yep. You're done. That was the that was well, the thing. Their imagery gets lost. He's like, all right, great. Now let's create a cloud mm -hmm. in the center of the room and sp spit your sh shit into the cloud. <laughs> uh, the sun is in the cloud now. It's recycling the bottom of your feet. Fuck, I got all my metaphors. Like He feels the <laughs> stress flows out of your body thing. At one point, we're in the clouds with the sun recycling our buttholes. <laughs> is, he says so you need to make a ground cord. And don't worry, you can make it any color that you like. We didn't explain what a grounding cord is, so no, you can uh -uh. make this thing I've not explained, but just pick a color, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And then at one point, so uh, let's be clear, the exercise is close your eyes and don't not breathe, right? <laughs> That's the entire thing. But along the way, at one point he says, okay, and now you just have to release your tension. And I'm like, well, if that's a step, that's the whole thing. <laughs> right? If release your tension is a step in the tension releasing exercise, the rest of the exercise is bullshit. Yeah. Okay, but Patreon goal, based on that line in this meditation if we hit a certain amount, I will go to one of this man's workshops. And when he says that, I will shit myself and pretend that I can't stop for the rest of the workshop <laughs> oh, yeah, pretend. until I am taken pretend. away in an ambulance. I get it. Yeah, pretend. <laughs> I, I just love God. Oh, his pronunciation of Gaia is a fucking hate crime, right? Oh, it made me want to vomit. <laughs> so many about syllables. Gaia. <laughs> oh, it made me want to vomit so badly. <laughs> and then they do a little nipple play. At the yep. end of the thing there. Hey, honestly, if you had asked me at the beginning whose boobs he was going to grab at the end of this, I would not have guessed his own. So he <laughs> <laughs> did better than I thought. But again, he says, put your hand over your heart. And then everyone does that. And then put your hand over your spiritual heart as well. And again, he hasn't established what or where or even why that is. But everyone's right. on board. Yeah, yeah, you just mean the other tit. It's fine. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> it's the other tit, your spirit heart. 
Well, and then, so, okay, so that that's his whole thing, right? Sit still and breathe. And then we go back to Melody, the sound healer, <laughs> and she's so half assed this. She's like, I don't know, just hit a fucking, you know, tuning fork, make sound. <laughs> she, oh. she doesn't have the time. She doesn't have the fill. She's like, uh, these are tuning forks. You hit them. I am done. <laughs> <laughs> so the way to use tuning forks is you hit them and then you listen to them. Thanks for joining us for our lecture. <laughs> Thanks for coming to my TED talk. It's just the thing is, you can listen to tuning forks. They can't stop you listening to tuning forks. Nobody can stop you doing that. It's not <laughs> even in prison. Um, not a protected. <laughs> not a protected class. <laughs> they won't even ID you for him. I love though that she's supposed to be the expert in sound, so she brought them and their microphone out into the windstorm to demonstrate her tuning forks. <laughs> All right. So now it's time to go back to Jerry Epstein. He's going to show us some of his sweet mental imagery exercise stuff. <laughs> That's it. You start off by closing your eyes and not not breathing again. <laughs> yeah, it's keep breathing. Now relax. Rinse and repeat and we're done. Good. Yes, right. Exactly. There was something, though, at the beginning that brought up some real interest here for me, where he says, close your eyes. Don't cross your hands or your legs. I was like, why, Jerry? What happens if I cross my hands and legs during your mental imagery? I wanted to try it. My skull collapses down onto my shoulders like a turtle. Oh. Like, don't, no, said, Jerry. don't do that. Sorry, sorry. I visualized crossing my arms. <laughs> there's, there's another weird thing that he says. He says at one point, you know, so many relationships are based on domination and submission, which is a weird thing to be saying in the middle of your meditation. Like, he's really opening up here. And I thought, oh, this isn't going to be one of those things where he's really open about his kink relationships, but he's got too little self-awareness to, to know that you don't care or you don't have any interest in hearing. And he's just like, <laughs> he just keeps going. You're like, uh-huh. Oh, do you now? Oh, really? With two of them? Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah. So he has this, imagine some sky stuff and he talks about some sub dumb shit. He's doing, mm -hmm. Basically, he does the same shtick as Cloud Guy did before, except he uses mm -hmm. shadows instead of clouds. And, and the shadow, it's, it's like, imagine now you're engulfed in shadow. Now come out of the light. It's like, yeah, but being engulfed in shadow, you know, it's not that bad. Like It, it happens literally <laughs> all the time. Like A lot of my life, I'm not in a direct source of light, for example. <laughs> I mean, I spend a lot of my time right. not directly in a source of light. But to be fair, once we get into the light, we're in charge. And I wrote my notes. You hear that, Noah? I'm in charge now because I pictured light. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I just, but again, and again, one of the steps is okay. I now feel different. Yeah. Right. Like again, we could have skipped all them other steps. You know, be cured is one of the steps. <laughs> the asinine nature of it is so apparent when he says, so out of the shadows into the light and in the light, Meet there the person or situation that you now feel different about. So do the thing or person or situation that you feel different or want to feel different or don't feel different about the end. It's just so vague. <laughs> yeah, right. Step three, profit. <laughs> Tell yeah. us, Jerry, what person, place, concept, phenomenon, or event <laughs> do I feel better about right now? <laughs> We'd be curious today. <laughs> All right. So then we go back to the Ministry of Silly Walks for some... <laughs> what, what is the pronunciation? I keep getting it wrong. Chi Gong? So I think it's I think it's it's either Qi Gong or as one lady says repeatedly, Qi Gong. And she says <laughs> Qi Gong so pronouncedly that I think that must be the correct way of pronouncing it. And she's just really proud she's nailed it and wants to show it off as often as possible. All right. right. But maybe maybe she's the mozzarella guy, right? When you go to an Italian <laughs> yeah. place. So you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. <laughs> so all right. So now Qi Jong guy is gonna show us the cancer curing walk. It's very mm -hmm. swishy. Yeah, you're sneaking up on a cartoon dog in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> yeah, I, I had down that it's like walk like you're tiptoeing in a Scooby-Doo cartoon and uh, next up he's going to show <laughs> yeah. us how to make a sandwich exactly as tall as your torso. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but act like you're a ghost doing that. Yeah, exactly. And you've got it down perfectly. It's so silly because one of the things, the, the final step, right? There's four steps in this little walk. The last one is that you have to look in the direction that your hand is pointing. Mm. But we see it originally from the side, which means that at the very end of it, he just looks right at camera as if to say, huh? How, how about that walk? Huh? <laughs> it totally made me lose it. I creased up at that point. <laughs> it was so good. And they kept showing, they showed this so many fucking times. He's like, I've walked like this for every day for 16 years. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, you could have read a book. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling real good about card trick practice right now. Thank you, Ken. It's just real it's four good. steps and a look. And they say, you know, there was a study of cancer patients in China. And after five years of walking like this daily, 
58% of them had no development in their cancer. So, right, so first of all, 42% did. So nearly You're half right. <laughs> their cancer got worse. And by cancer patients, are you including people in remission? Because right. if you are, then it's not that much of a surprise after five years that it didn't get worse. But he's just walking. And he says it's good for eliminating or at the very least preventing any kind of disease in the body. And he's just walking. Imagine if you actually thought just walking would cure or prevent all disease. It's incredible. Yeah. It's one Qigong set that does that. Just one of them. Why would you learn any others? It does everything. <laughs> right. So much. Well, and also... Why would you include any others in your goddamn documentary? <laughs> yes. We could really focus in on this walk and just go home. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's every time it's, you know, take three steps and on the fourth step, you look to the side. And the fourth step gets me every single time. I can just imagine <laughs> like, oh, God, oh, did you hear about Bob? Yeah, no, it was cancer. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, he was doing the walk, but he kept looking to the left on step four. And he oh, shouldn't have looked to the right. I mean, it's makes a senseless it tragedy. It's a truly senseless tragedy. <laughs> All right, so we're going to wrap it up, but don't worry, it's like Jurassic Park. They know who the fucking hero of the story is, <laughs> and Spinny Guy returns. Oh. He's back. I was worried about him. In his full glory, he's got All the chakras. lasers are going, <laughs> all the colors at once. <laughs> And they say, you know, countless studies reveal that energy... Met countless! We can't even count them! There's so goddamn many... Stop animals. trying to count them! <laughs> And it's just, to sum up, all the things we've said so far, they're true, if destroyed, still true. IDST, it's fine, we're done, we're done. <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh God, one of them just says at, at one point, like, you know, this is the true healthcare reform, just in case you hadn't, like, you'd lost track of how much fuck you that this movie deserved. And, and they talk about evolution as well. They talk about this being the new evolution, and it feels really odd to be lectured on evolution by someone who is actively involved in cultivating dead ends, in just heading people <laughs> off towards an evolutionary dead end. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so fucking stupid. All right, so anybody care to take a stab at distilling the moral of the story? For just six easy payments of $99.99. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you keep doing it. It's supposed to do that. Two years. It's supposed yeah. to do that at first. You have to believe in it. It's all about Better. breathing. <laughs> you can be a renowned author if all you do is record CDs. It's absolutely legitimate. Yes. It's a perfectly legitimate <laughs> form of communication. They can't stop you from calling yourself <laughs> internationally recognized. Do you have a passport? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and of course, after forcing him to sit through that piece of shit, I'd be remiss if I didn't at least plug his stuff. So be sure to check out Marsh's work. You'll find Be Reasonable and Skeptics with a K link to the show notes, along with a link to see the amazing work that he's doing on The Skeptic. Truly great stuff. I really look forward to every new article I'm finding on it. Marsh, thanks again for hanging out with us today. Thanks for having me, guys. Always a pleasure. And while that does it for our review of The Healing Field, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need a 285 up or down on this. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. We'll be watching the anti-abortion legal drama, The Order of Rights. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 284 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh for hanging out with us today. And an even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scale, The Atheist, Citation, Data, D&D, Minus, The Skeptic, right available wherever our podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Snot and Evil Jeffs on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm Lucian's promise and to work hard to earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. Melody and her husband Rich quit their sound healing business and went on to start a swingers retreat instead. And they were both so much happier about it. <laughs> so were the people listening. The Japanese went on to have a man who could bend his leg back over his head and back again with every single step. A bunch of people in this movie died of treatable, real conditions, and nobody's in jail because of it.
don't. She just ended on a depressing note, Eli. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't let Eli go last in future. <laughs> right? I did the key gong walk at my son. He thought it was very funny. Okay. <laughs> I cured his cancer and made him laugh. So there you go. <laughs> He's still not president, Morgan. Still. It's just still not. Days. It's just... Are you going to do that on every single recording? You just start forever? every recording. Still, still not. Well, at least for four years. It might <laughs> not be forever. It's a good chance. It's a good chance that I'll do it for the remainder <laughs> of five. It's breakup rules. You get one month of mourning for every year you were in the relationship. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah. 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 No, that makes sense. That's fair. All right. And and think about who Lucinda could take care of in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. He's got chubby cheeks and he takes whatever vaccines you want to give him because his, <laughs> his arms are too weak to stop you. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, are, so is his. That's what's pissing me off. It's like, I could give the motherfucker a vaccine. <laughs> yeah, you just leave the needle, needle on the table and leave the room. Oh my <laughs> God, I'm going to do that next time. I'm at the hospital. So listeners at home, my goddamn fucking father-in-law wouldn't take the goddamn fucking vaccine when they offered it to him. They said, hey, you want the COVID vaccine? 68-year-old men with collapsed lungs and renal failure and a bad heart? And he's like, no, because it'll give me COVID. And they're like, nope, not how vaccines work anyway. So that's what next time they fucking do that. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be just like, turn your back. Just turn your back. <laughs> Don't tell anybody about the noises you hear. Just Leave word. the room. Do not open the door. <laughs> <laughs> just, just keep, you know, to usher people the other way for like one minute and eight seconds. He's weak. He's old. Motherfucker can't get up to shit. I think he can stop me from vaccinating his ass. <laughs> Good news. He's gotten both shots. A bunch of times. <laughs> He's stabbing down in his heart like in Pulp Fiction, right? <laughs> <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.